Okay, so there's only four games to show tonight from 2011 that I thought were worthy. And then, uh, so it'll be a short stream. And this is my game with Gregory Kaidanov from the U.S. Championship in 2011. And I've been playing Kaidanov since probably 1991, something like that. And between 1991 and 2011, I'd never beaten him. We have a lot of draws, and he beat me a few times. So we've been playing for 20 years, and this is the only game I've ever beaten Kaidanov. Um, and I played almost a perfect game to do it, but not quite perfect. Okay, so I was white in a Queen's Gambit, just like the mini series. And in this position, black can play the note boom by taking. Um, but I noticed before Kaidanov had played knight f6 and bishop e7, which is a rather passive play of playing this position. Normally they take on c4, or you can play knight bd7 and transpose to a, uh, a Cambridge Springs. This is just a passive line of the Queen's Gambit declined, but in preparing for the game, uh, I noted that he had played this before, so I prepared for this. And this is just a normal Queen's Gambit declined. Okay, and he took on c4, I took back, and he played b5. So black will eventually fianchetto his bishop, and then at some point in the late opening, early middle game, black will attempt to play c5, which attacks the center and opens up his bishop. So my goal is to make sure he can't play c5 ever, and his goal is to play c5. Anyway, I saved my bishop because I was pretty good in 2011. Now I would probably just hang my bishop. But I saw it, bishop d3, bishop b7. And so I played rook c1, so my rook is on the c line, tr trying to make it harder for him to play c5. He played rook c8. And then I played knight e5. Okay, now in this position... Uh, Kaidanov made his first mistake. The uh, engine says that he should take on C, take on e5 and, and basically get this position where it looks like white's better because white can try to play knight e4 to d6. Um, and the engine says black is okay if black plays either f5 to stop knight e4 or knight c5. It says white has a small advantage, okay, but it's playable for black. Okay, but he didn't play knight takes knight. He played b4, attacking my knight. And I made my first good move of the game. In fact, this is the only move that would give white an advantage. Now, the problem with moving the knight to a4 or e2 is we go to that same variation that I just showed you, except I can't play knight e4 to d6 because I've already moved my knight to a lesser square. And the engine actually prefers black in those positions. After knight a4, knight e2 takes a knight d7, it actually says black is better because there's no way I can prevent black from playing c5. Okay, but I know in these positions, when black is trying to play c5, there's queen's gambit positions like this one. Then there's semi-slav positions where uh, white is playing e3 with the bishop still on c1. And those positions are different because we don't have the option to play the best move here with our bishop on c1 or d2. Now I can play the move bishop takes f6. And this is a very important move because... When black recaptures with a minor piece, uh, black is taking one of the defenses of c5 uh, away, so he can't play c5. And if he takes with the g pawn, he's messing up his king pretty badly. Uh, okay, now, now 
can also take on c3, which just loses a pawn because I take his bishop and then take on c3. We can't do that. Okay. Um, now we can see it's almost impossible for black to play c5 and therefore have a terrible bishop the rest of the game. If he takes with the bishop, then I trade on d7 and play knight e4 and you'll, you're never going to play c5 and your bishop is just terrible the rest of the game. In fact, the, the, the engine already thinks white's winning strategically just because the bishop's just bad forever. And these pawns aren't so good either. Okay, and so he took with the knight, which is correct. And now I played knight e4. So I'm preventing c5, or so I thought. And uh, what, what's funny is when the game ended, Kaidenov thought he made the losing move here. Although in reality, uh, b4 was already a big mistake. And this position's already poor for black because he can't play c5. And the engine says he should take take and play bishop d6, but it, it doesn't like black's position. You can see how weak this pawn is and how c5 is impossible. So it already says white's up about 0 0.8, 0 0.9. Okay, and even though I thought knight e4 prevented c5, that didn't stop him from playing c5. So he played c5. Okay, complicated. Now the bishop is good. And I only have one good move here because my knight's hanging, so I, I can't take with the d-pawn. Trading isn't good because he just takes back and he's gotten c5 in. So I have to take with the knight. Now I'm a pawn ahead and I'm threatening his bishop. So he takes. I take. And this position, if he plays, I don't want to say obvious, but if he plays queen d5, threatening queen g2 mate and queen takes knight and attacking my pawn, then I get a winning position by playing the move c6. And unfortunately for him, there's a nice tactic that works in my favor. And the engine actually plays bishop a8 here and says black has a terrible position. If you take this, you lose tactically to takes, takes, bishop h7 check, and the idea is you're going to take the queen and then take the rook. So he takes my piece, I take, takes back with the knight or the pawn, and he's down in the exchange for no pawns. So completely losing endgame for him. And because I can play c6, white has a big advantage here. If I couldn't play c6, then black's fine. Okay, so he didn't play queen d5. He played queen a5, which is the engine recommendation. And luckily, I can still play c6. And he has to play bishop a8. And after the game, he just thought this is completely lost. And so the rest of the game where the engine says I'm like plus one, he just feels like, you know, it, it's over. So during the game, he was very negative about his position here because I'm a pawn up and it, it's a pretty good pawn. I can't really argue with that pawn. Okay, so my knight's attacked. So I played f4 because I want to save my knight and my knight's defending my pawn. So very reasonable. And if he wanted to, he could win his pawn back at the cost of several tempi by playing queen takes a2. Uh, of course, I mean, this pawn's a monster, so I don't really care about that pawn. Uh, he decided to put pressure on my pawn, played rook c7. He's going to double rooks and hopefully take my pawn. Okay, I played rook f2, so I can play rook c2 and defend my pawn. He played knight d5, attacking my pawn on e3. I played queen f3, defending it. Played rook d8. I played rook c2, which was my intention when I played rook f2. I want to make sure I never lose this pawn. And if I never lose this pawn, well, later I can queen it. And his bishop is just trapped in the corner here. 
He played queen b6, which is the engine move, attacking my e3 pawn again. I played rook c5. And he played the tactical knight c3, which attacks my rook because the knight is blocking the defense of my rook from the other rook. Okay, and so I played rook c4, which is the only move. And he went back to d5. And one thing you've heard me say on the stream many times is always repeat. And the person who taught me always repeat is Gregory Kaidanov, my opponent. I worked with him when I had the Samford Fellowship from 1992 to 1994. And I went to his house a few times and had weekend sessions. And he came to my house once. And we would also meet at tournaments. So we met about 10 times for several days each over two years and worked on my chess. So he taught me always repeat. So I always repeated. Okay, and then if I play rook c5, it's a draw. But obviously I don't want to draw. So I defended my e pawn. Okay, and then I repeated later, I think, also. He played knight e7. He's trying to get all of his pieces attacking my c-pawn and then take the c-pawn. And I have almost all of my pieces defending the c-pawn. Also, my knight could get overworked because the knight on e7 did a discovered attack on my bishop and my knight's defending my pawn and my bishop. So maybe he could do some trick where he takes one, then takes the other. Okay, I played queen h5, which the engine says is the best move. And I want to take on f7. And if he plays g6, his h pawn is hanging. If he plays rook f8, that's fine with me because rook is really good on the d line. So he played knight d5, defending his pawn. And I played the move queen f3 because always repeat. And he played knight e7 again. And... Uh, interesting. I want to look at something because it seems like the same position occurred three times, but obviously I wouldn't allow that. Okay, so... Okay. So I want the position after rook c4. So this is... Okay, so this is one. Oh, I played king f2. Oh, okay. That means the position's never occurred. Okay, yeah. Okay, then I repeated. And now if I play queen f3, it's a draw, but I played queen e2 because I don't want to draw. So I repeated twice, so he knows I'm a good student. Okay, and he played rook e7, which I can't really explain rook e7. I don't know, he's, he's got nothing to do. I attacked his queen, he saw it. I improve my bishop. And I'm just winning because I'm a pawn up and it's a crushing pawn. Never play f6. Now I'm threatening knight to b5, forking his rooks. So he played a6. Um, everything wins here. f5 is also winning. But it doesn't matter what I do. His bishop is just dead on a8. Now his e6 pawn is attacked. And he played rook c8. Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter what he does. I'm still winning. Now, uh, I, 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 I can't take this pawn because my knight's pinned to my rook. So I played rook dc1. And now I can take this pawn... Except it's not my turn, but if it was, and he played a5. And again, I decided not to take the pawn because he would play rook d2 check and get his rook active. So I played rook c2. Now I'm going to take the pawn, but he protected it. So then I couldn't. And this was time control. Uh, on this, We played rook c8. This was move 40. So we weren't in time trouble anymore. Um, and then I played c7, finally letting his bishop out, but I'm threatening the queen. Uh, 
not easy to stop me from queening. So he played rook c8, which stops me. He played rook c5, which stops me from queening. And everything wins, but I played the most cute win, which is queen takes e6 check. Because uh, in this position, my queen is attacked, so I can't take his rook for free. But once I play check, uh, well, now he loses everything. So he resigned. The only way to play on is to trade queens and then trade rooks. And then he has to play rook c8 to stop me from queening. And then I'm two pawns up for nothing. And I have a pass pawn on the seventh. So I'll win eventually. So instead of doing that after queen e6 check, he resigned. And then after the game, he was like, yeah, after c5, I'm just lost. I thought I could win my pawn back, but I couldn't. And uh, c5 was probably a mistake, and b4 before that was a mistake. And then he probably is lost the rest of the game. So that was one of my better games from 2011, and especially since I, I beat a guy I never beat before. Now, I've been friends with Kaidenov since before most of you were born. And we don't play quick draws when we play, Usually he beats me, but when we do play a draw, we've played till king versus king. And we played another draw where I sacked a rook and I perpetual checked him. Um, so when we draw, it's always a fight to the end. And he usually wins, and then I won this one game. Anyway, I'd never beaten Kaidna before, and this was in St. Louis at the U.S. Championship. So is wife knew that I beat him and she probably knew I never beat him before. Uh, anyway, the next day she showed up surprising him. And for a lot of people, a lot of married couples, that could be a risky thing to do, but not in this case. She, she felt bad for him because he lost to me. So she showed up at the U S championship to make him feel better because he lost to me. That's, you know, I made his wife go from Lexington to St. Louis because of a chess game. So that was a nice surprise. He was happy the rest of the tournament. Uh, no, no, we didn't adjourn in 2011. No. I, I have had adjourned games. His wife or your wife? His wife is the one that came. In 2011... Um, I was, I did not have a wife. So my, my wife didn't console me because I didn't have one. Karen and I got married uh, in 2016. Is that right? Yeah. I was divorced in 2008. So for several years, I, I did not have a wife. But usually I have a wife. So 